Cosmic Dreamsicle Designs by Danielle. In this video, I show you how to draft your very own basic bodice blocks and basic sleeve block stretch edition. This is your front bodice block. This is your back bodice block. And this is your sleeve block. I show you how to draft these from an existing knit top that you should have at home, like a t-shirt, and then verify key vertical measurements. It's important to have your own basic blocks because from that, you can create anything. For example, this top I'm wearing was created from my basic blocks. Let's get started. These are the tools that you need for the pattern making a knit stretch top with sleeve so that you can trace those armholes, a pencil with an eraser, paper scissors, a tape measure, mine has both inches and centimeters on it, a hip curve ruler, a French curve ruler, a large rectangular ruler, mine is six inches by 24 inches, a large sheet of paper, I'm using poster board that is 22 by 28 inches. Draw a horizontal line at the halfway mark on your paper. Take your knit stretch top and fold it in half with the back sides together. Make sure that it's folded evenly directly on those side seams. Even out the top so that it is symmetrical on both sides. Take that folded line, place that up against that horizontal line that you drew earlier. Take your pencil and you're going to trace the outline of your entire top, with the exception of the sleeves. Make sure to press your top flat when you're tracing it. When you get to the underarm, you want to pull it taut but not stretch it and then mark that end point of the armhole. When you get to the shoulder point, you want to mark where that is as well. To trace the arm side, place your thumb on that curve, carefully lift up that sleeve, and mark the location of your thumb with your pencil. Continue with this process until you've traced the entire arm side length. When you're happy with what you've traced, Use your three rulers, your rectangular ruler, your hip curve ruler, your French curve ruler to smooth out those lines that you drew. We need to verify the length of your arm side using your tape measure. Measure the length of your arm side on your folded and flattened knit top and then compare that against the arm side length that you drew. Mine ended up being about 0.25 inches too short. To add in that extra 0.25 inches, I'm using my tape measure to approximate the curve of your arm side, tracing that out, and then going back in with my French curve ruler to smooth out those lines. As well as doing one final check to confirm that arm side length. Draw vertical reference lines at your neckline and the bottom of your top. Next, we need to mark the waistline from which we're gonna verify key vertical measurements. Use your tape measure to determine what is the smallest measurement along that side curve. That smallest measurement will be your waist. Place a mark and then draw a vertical line. We're gonna verify key vertical measurements on your pattern by checking against your true body measurements. For the purpose of showing you this on the video, I have overlaid a clear acetate paper on top of my pattern so that I can easily show you any changes that we need to make to your pattern based on your body measurements. Before you take your body measurements, you're going to take some kind of tape, place it on your center front, your high point shoulder, your shoulder point, and on your center back. Then you're going to take ribbon or string and tie that around your chest and your waist. The first measurement that you'll take is from your center front to your waistline. On your pattern, 
Measure that distance from your center front to your waistline, starting from your waistline as your anchor point, and then mark the center front. Next, you're going to measure your neck circumference at the base of your neck. You're going to use that measurement to determine where your high point shoulder is relative to the center front. Take your neck circumference and divide that by 5, giving you the horizontal distance from your center front to your high point shoulder. Take your neck circumference again, divide that by 5, and add 0.5 inches. This will give you your vertical distance between your center front and high point shoulder and allow you to mark the location of that high point shoulder on your pattern. Draw a curve connecting the high point shoulder with the center front, and this will be your front neckline. This next body measurement is a little tricky. We need to determine our shoulder slope. Taking a piece of paper, applying tape on the top and the bottom, place that on the wall behind you, parallel to the ground. Relax your shoulders and your neck. Take a pencil and carefully trace out that shoulder slope from your neck to the end of your shoulder. When you're done, remove that piece of paper from the wall and this is what your shoulder slope should look like. Next, measure the distance from your high point shoulder to the edge of your shoulder. The edge of your shoulder should be at that bony protrusion. Take the shoulder slant drawing that you drew earlier and draw a straight line through it. Mark the location of your high point shoulder at the base of your neck. Using a tape measure, mark the location of the edge of your shoulder or the shoulder point from the measurement that you took earlier. Draw a horizontal line from that shoulder point parallel to the sheet of paper. Draw a vertical line down from your high point shoulder perpendicular to that horizontal line you just drew. Measure the distance of that vertical line. That represents your shoulder height. For me, it was about 1.5 inches. Draw a straight line down from your high point shoulder representing your shoulder height. Mine is 1.5 inches. Draw a perpendicular line to that shoulder height line. Take your tape measure and using the distance between your high point shoulder and your shoulder point, find the intersection with that perpendicular line you just drew and that will mark your shoulder point on your pattern. Draw a line connecting the high point shoulder to the shoulder point. Measure your armhole circumference. Take that number and divide it by two, giving you your arm side depth. Measure that depth from your corrected shoulder point to determine if you need to modify it on your pattern. For me, that arm side depth ended up being a little lower than what I had originally traced. Move that arm side point up or down depending on your arm side depth that you measured, making sure not to change the width of that arm side point. Redraw the arm side curve using your tape measure. Go back in with your French curve ruler to smooth out your lines. Connect that redrawn arm side curve with your waistline. You can use our French curve ruler for that initial top curve and then the hip curve ruler to connect it down to your waist. Working around that fold line, we're going to add the hem at the bottom of the top and then the seam allowance on the sides, at the armhole, at the shoulder, and at the neckline. I've used a 1 inch hem at the bottom and a 0.5 inch seam allowance. Use your paper scissors to cut out your pattern along that fold line and the hems and the seam allowances. We're going to create the back bodice block from the front bodice block. Flip your front bodice block to the other side and mark the waistline. Then move that front bodice block over to the other side of the fold line, making sure that the waistline matches up as well as the bottom part of the top and that neckline. Use your pencil to trace around that bodice block. And then return the front bodice block to the original position. Draw the inside lines of your back bodice block using the hem and seam allowance as reference. Measure the distance from your center back to your waistline. 
on your pattern, starting from your waistline as your reference point, use that to mark the location of your center back. Draw a curve between your center back and your high point shoulder, and that will be your back neckline. This next measurement could have been done earlier. Measure the distance between your center front and your chest line. On your pattern, using the waistline as the reference, mark the location of your chest line on both the front and back bodice blocks. And then draw a line through that chest point. Use paper scissors to cut out your back bodice block along the hems and seam allowances. These are your finished bodice blocks. The front bodice block is on your left, the back bodice block is on your right, and in the center is the fold line for each. Using a new piece of paper, draw a horizontal line at the halfway mark and then a vertical line two inches in. Use the same stretchy knit top as before, taking the left sleeve, fold that in half using the bottom seam as a guide, take the shoulder point, place that up against the intersection of those two lines on your paper, and then use the outer sleeve edge to line that up with the horizontal line on your paper. Pressure sleeve flat, make sure that it's taut and not stretched. To trace the arm side, place your thumb on that curve, carefully lift up that sleeve, and mark the location of your thumb with your pencil. Use a French curve ruler to smooth out the arm side curve. The top of your sleeve curve needs to flatten out to be able to smoothly connect to its other half. Similarly, the bottom of that arm side curve also needs to flatten out to be able to connect smoothly with its other half. Smooth out the lines for the rest of the sleeve, the side of the sleeve, and the bottom using your rectangular ruler, hip curve ruler, and or your French curve ruler. We're going to verify the arm side length that we traced, comparing it against the arm side length of our front bodice block. My arm side length was the same, but if yours is too long or too short, you can redraw that out using the tape measure as your guideline and then going back in with your French curve ruler to smooth out those lines. We're going to verify the bicep height. Use your tape measure to measure from your shoulder point down to where your bicep is. Your bicep should be located at roughly the bottom of your armhole. Add about half an inch to an inch to that bicep height that you measured and use that new number for your pattern. This is to give you enough ease for movement. On your pattern, that bicep height is from the top of your sleeve to the bottom of that arm side curve. Mark the location of your bicep height on your pattern, and if needed, redraw that arm side curve using your tape measure as a guideline, and then going back in with your French curve ruler to smooth out those lines. We're going to measure the distance from the shoulder point to the wrist. Mark the location of the wrist on your pattern. And if your pattern already has a wrist, then you can verify that location. Next, measure the circumference of your wrist. Add about an inch for ease of movement. Divide that number by two and mark it on your pattern. Connect your wrist line with the portion of the sleeve that was already traced. And use your French curve ruler to join the rest of the line with the bottom of the arm side curve. Working away from the center line, you're going to add in your hem at the bottom of the sleeve and your seam allowance all the way around. I used a 1 inch hem for the bottom of the sleeve and a 0.5 inch seam allowance. This is what your pattern should look like after you've added in the hem and seam allowance. Draw a straight line perpendicular to your bicep depth. This is the bicep line. Use paper scissors to cut out your sleeve and score the center line. Fold your sleeve along that scored center line. Once you finish folding it flat, take your pencil and trace the outline of that sleeve on the other side. Fold your sleeve back to the original position. Add the inside lines to the other sleeve half using the hem and seam allowance as reference. Use paper scissors to cut out the other half of the sleeve. Take all three pattern pieces and mark a three inch notch from the bottom of that arm side curve. 
This notch is what you're going to use to line up the sleeve with the front and back bodice pieces. Use your tape measure to mark these notches. These are your final pattern blocks. The front bodice block is on the left, the back bodice block is in the center, and your sleeve block is on the right. I highly recommend that you make a prototype from these pattern pieces before finalizing them. This will allow you to make any final changes to ensure a perfect fit for your body. Here are some examples of tops that I've made from my basic blocks. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. If you can dream it, you can make it. And it all starts with these three basic blocks, Stretch Edition. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you do make anything from your basic blocks, please tag me. I'd love to see how they turned out. Happy designing!